All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to be going through six different stadiums and talking about what I think is going to happen to them. Normally, we always talk about the stadiums that possibly will be getting renovations, might be getting replaced, like Soldier Field, Cleveland Brown Stadium, Tropicana Field, the Coliseum. These are stadiums I really never talk about because they've either, they've either recently gotten renovations or there's just nothing planned for them. And I'm going to be giving my take on what I think is going to be happening within the next 10 to 15 years to all of these stadiums. The first one, it is Hard Rock Stadium. Now, Hard Rock Stadium did receive their massive two-year renovation back around 2014 2015 they've got the overhang going around the entire stadium i do think the exterior looks a little bit aged but this is a stadium that i think has a solid 15 to 20 more years in it in terms of its lifespan and then when it comes to just stadiums in florida overall we're seeing a lot more roofs overhangs i wonder when it comes to a, a, a new stadium in miami if they will go with a super stadium, I would imagine they would, and, and probably they will have a roof on top of it because we saw what the Marlins tried to do with Lone Depot Park. It's been a failure. The roof is closed 98% of the time due to humidity. When you look at Hard Rock, especially during September and October, the, those dolphin Sunday afternoon games, the sun is brutal. They've actually been able to use it to their advantage. The way they position themselves on the one sideline, they're always in the shade and the opposing team is always in the sun and it's, it's pretty brutal sun. You know, you'll get two games a year where it'll be 95 degrees on the field, 100 degrees on the field for the one o'clock games in September and October, and they're gonna wanna mitigate that within 10 to 15 years, you would think, and plan for a new stadium. The renovation has done its job already. You know, it's prolonged. We remember this stadium when it was multi-purpose, how bad it was. The stadium's gonna exist an extra 20, maybe 25 years because of it. I do think Miami will be planning for a new stadium, possibly by 2030-ish, maybe 2032, and then they'll get it by 2035. And it's probably gonna be some type of translucent roof, maybe like almost SoFi-esque stadium to where there's a roof on it, but you're also gonna let in natural airflow. I think that's gonna be a big thing, especially in tropical climates where you're dealing with humidity and the sun, you put a roof on it, but it's translucent. So the roof, you know, blocks out the really harmful sun rays. It still allows for natural light onto the field. And then you leave an open window, almost like a ventilation system that allows for that natural, nice air in Miami to come into the stadium. They could do something like that. Or because of the humidity, they might just make it fully climate controlled and with a translucent roof. I highly doubt it's gonna be retractable, there probably will be retractable windows, but that's just my take on the future home of the Miami Dolphins and also the Miami Hurricanes, at least right now. They've been talking about trying to get that new stadium going. Nothing's really happened, so we can assume that the Hurricanes will also be playing there. The next stadium is Arkashore Stadium in Pittsburgh. This was formerly called Heinz Field. And this is a weird one because when you look at this stadium, the timeline should be very similar to MNT Bank Stadium in Baltimore, to Cleveland Brown Stadium in Cleveland. If you guys don't know, the Ravens just announced a massive renovation, exterior renovation to their stadium. The Browns might be getting a straight up new $2 billion stadium or a huge $1 billion renovation. But nothing has really been going on with the Steelers. Now their ownership has addressed the situation and said they like where they're at currently. Currently, that leads me to believe possibly a big time renovation within five to 10 years. This is just gonna come down to, you know, is it gonna be the $500 million renovation or will they try and get a new stadium? Basically, is the Steelers ownership willing to spend money on a new stadium? If they're not, they probably will do some type of big time renovation to Arkashore Stadium. It's really a 50-50 call on what the Steelers end up doing. And I would say this is something that's gonna happen within the next, five to six years based on the timeline of other stadiums. And it's not like this is this is some great stadium. I would say it's average at best right now in Pittsburgh. So within five to six years, there's gonna be the dialogue, there's gonna be the comparison. Is it gonna be a huge renovation to this stadium or is it gonna be a brand new stadium in Pittsburgh? Maybe a dome, probably not. But either way, there is that one. We also do have Bush Stadium. So this is one I did talk about recently. We received word that Bush Stadium is possibly getting a $600 million renovation that they want to be paid for by the public. 
I think there's next to no way this happens. It's very confusing. Bush Stadium, the way it is right now, if you left it alone for the next 10 years, I still think it would probably be a top 10, maybe top 12 stadium in MLB. They've already renovated it. The upper deck areas, they've taken out seats, put in standing room spaces. They've already given it a ballpark district. I don't know what they're talking about. That came out of complete left field. The idea that it needs a $600 million renovation, which... I mean, to put into context, Oklahoma City, their new arena is going to cost like $950 million, $600 million just to renovate a stadium that I already consider top 10 in MLB doesn't really make sense outside of possibly getting a brand new bigger scoreboard, which would really only cost about $75 million. Either way, I would guess that this demand for the money will not happen and they might do some type of smaller infrastructure renovation but it just seems so unnecessary. There's going to be really no big change. That's my prediction on Bush Stadium within the next 10 to 15 years, and it should be fine as a solid MLB stadium, possibly even longer, maybe 20, 25 years. This thing just opened about 20 years ago. So there is that one. The next one, it is Globe Life Field. People hate this stadium, man. They really do. There are so many people that have this stadium ranked outside of the top 20 in their rankings, which is just crazy considering it is the newest MLB stadium. And I do think this is not gonna age well. Now they do have some unique factors to it. The retractable roof, even when it's closed, there's some glass paneling, which lets in natural light. You've got the kind of floating seats out beyond left field, which is pretty cool. But overall, I do think this stadium is not gonna last nearly as long as people think. It'll put its, you know, 22, maybe 25 years in. The only positive it has is the fact that it is a retractable roof. So it's not like you're gonna be dealing with any issues in terms of the previous Ranger Stadium where they had to leave it really quickly because of the heat problem. So I think it's gonna be able to last at you know over two decades obviously there wasn't a ton of money dumped into it when you look at you know the building costs in the state of texas around 1.1 billion i want to say for this stadium which is pretty cheap for a retractable roof multi-purpose stadium that seats around 42 43 thousand i'm guessing it doesn't last very long it is certainly not going to be one of mlb's great stadiums you know of the 2040s or 2050s It'll put in its 25 to 30 years. Maybe they'll keep it because, again, it has a retractable roof. But this is going to be aging very badly, I would say. The exterior is extremely bland. People have compared it to Costco. And yeah, just not a good stadium. So it, it'll put its time in because it's a retractable roof. It does let in natural light. Obviously, it's going to have a lot of positives because it's the newest MLB stadium. But the issue is when you build a brand new stadium, that stadium should virtually always be ranked minimum inside the top 10. And a lot of people have it outside of their top 20s. So you can just tell this is not going to age well when it comes to Globe Life Field. Next, we do have Lone Depot Park. Oh, Lone Depot Park, such an interesting stadium. Originally, Marlins Park. Limited capacity, only 37,000 built, extremely small, especially... You know, when it was built in 2012, nobody was opening stadiums with capacities under 40K, but the Marlins did. And it was a good thing that they did because their attendance is so bad. I don't know what the remedy is to this situation in Florida when it comes to these stadiums. The problem with Lone Depot Park, you know, if they could redo it, I'm guessing they would go with a straight dome and make the roof translucent with a lot of natural light. There's no way they would have a retractable roof. I do give them credit for opening the roof more early on this season. I think they've had it open for five or six games, but it's clear that this you're, you're trying to fit a square peg into a round hole when you look at something like this and you've got the roof closed 98% of the time. So it's unfortunate basically throughout June, July, August, even into September, it's never open. It, this is a, a very interesting stadium, but I almost wonder the Marlins might just leave. Like, they might move at a certain point. They really can't do it right now because the stadium is still virtually brand new, only like a decade old. But once you get into the late 2020s, early 2030s, if nothing has really changed for the Marlins, and we've seen the Marlins, albeit it was way back when they were at the multi-purpose stadium, Sun Life Stadium, they've went on World Series runs. It really hasn't helped the attendance, attend it really hasn't helped the attendance a ton. But to be fair, I mean, they've been terrible when they've been at this stadium. I don't think this stadium has hosted a single Marlins playoff game. It's hosted the World Baseball Classic, but that's about it. 
And if the Marlins do abruptly leave in the early 2030s, they're not going to knock this thing down. They'll leave it up. It'll probably be the go-to spot for the World Baseball Classic, you know, in, in March because it's just such a great climate in Miami in March. Unfortunately, MLB season really doesn't start until April. So I think this stadium is going to get probably very light use if things continue to trend in this direction where the Marlins have terrible attendance and at a certain point they're going to possibly move which would deem the stadium almost completely useless outside of single events considering it is a baseball only stadium but we will see and then the final one it is the Paycom Center so the Paycom Center relatively new opening in 2002 the Oklahoma City Thunder want a new arena it's already been approved it's already been voted on we're waiting for the renderings we're waiting for some other legal stuff to be sorted out. But you look at the Paycom Center and the exterior brick design is completely aged. The interior, you know, this is another one of those situations. I always talk about the Winnipeg situation where they built the arena before they got the team. So the arena was done pretty cheaply. It's not like you can spend a billion dollars on an arena for a team that you don't have yet. They build these arenas to lure NBA teams and it worked for them but it was never gonna be an arena that was gonna last 40 or 50 years outside of them doing some type of huge renovation to it and they deemed it not worth it. You're talking about possibly, you know, a 400 or a $500 million renovation to the Paycom Center versus just getting a straight up brand new arena that's gonna keep the Thunder in OKC through at least 2050. I think they're gonna knock down the Paycom Center, honestly, based on its location and where the new arena could potentially go. They're gonna need that land. So that is my opinion on that, possibly by 2030 or 2030. One, does OKC really need two full-fledged NBA arenas to where you could make the argument and say, well, the Paycom Center opening, you know, in 2002, there's no need to knock it down right now. It's not completely decrepit, but does Oklahoma City really need another arena? Are they a big enough city to where that would be something that, you know, would be a need? I just don't see it. So I think they will knock down the Paycom Center. Maybe it'll take a few years after they move. Maybe they'll leave it up until 2034 or 2035 but that would be my opinion when it comes to that. Either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.